All right, guys, so here at Lunch Loop by the Wash, kind of by the parking lot, lots of um, non-native invasive species. And uh, here's one right here. So teeny tiny flowers on this guy, uh, but we can see the fruits. So a nice raceme. I can see a little septum dividing this. So a two carpolate fruit. These are little silicles. So this is brassicaceae. This is gonna be uh, one of our lovely little brassicaceae. This one's actually not very lovely. It's a, a non-native invasive species. You can see that nice raceme inflorescence going on right there. So uh, we're gonna start out peeing brassicaceae. So the brassicaceae key starts on page 219. Um, and one of the big things we're gonna be looking at is the hairs, right? So the first kind of key to keys talks about the hairs. Now I know hairs don't show up great. Uh, if you can see this, you know, this little leaf here, I can see uh, little stellate branched hairs. So those are the kind of star shaped hairs. I can see those on this. And so that's gonna be uh, kind of the first couplet here is plants with at least some branched hairs. You know, they can be Y-shaped, forked, stellate, delabriform. Uh, this one kind of, if I can draw it in the dirt here, you know, it kind of comes out and then branches off the top like a little star-shaped hair. So we're gonna go to key one. So key one, plant scapos with all basal leaves or with a single stem leaf versus plants with at least two stem leaves. Well, if I look at this plant, I see, you know, leaf, 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 all up the stem. So we're going to say plants with at least two stem leaves and go to couplet three. Couplet three asks whether the leaves are compound or pinnately divided, or whether the leaves are simple, toothed, or pinnatifid, but not all the way to the midrib. I'll pull off a single leaf here. Uh, pretty straightforward, simple, and almost linear. Okay, so we're gonna say leaves are simple and go to couplet five. Now it's asking about how the leaves are attached. So are the leaves sessile right on the stem with some sort of wrapping base, sagittate or amplexical or aripulate, somehow wrapping around the stem. Again, if I look here, um, they're kind of got a like short little petiole. Um, you can see how it kind of thins at the base there. I would not call them any kind of sagittate. So we're gonna go to couplet number 11. Couplet number 11. Stems and leaves mostly with sessile two rayed delabriform hairs. So delabriform means it comes up and then across like a T. Uh, ours actually are stellate hairs. So we're gonna go to couplet 14. And a couple at 14, it asks more about the hairs, whether they're really stellate or more kind of Y-shaped or whatever. Again, we've really got these stellate hairs going on. So we'll go to couple at 15. Now we're gonna look at the fruits. fruits. Fruits usually inflated or somewhat flattened, mostly round in cross section. Uh, so I'll pull off a couple of fruits here. You can see these fruits have a bulge, that one split open. They have a little bulge, but they're mostly disc shaped. They're really not very inflated. Um, flowers, this one, if we read a little further, flowers usually yellow or sometimes white. Uh, these are teeny tiny little yellow flowers at the tip. Plants usually with a dense basal rosette of leaves. No, I don't see that. So between the fact that the fruits are not inflated and there's no basal rosette, I'm gonna say this is not Fisaria. So we'll go with 15B, which takes us to couplet 16. Couplet 16 asking more about the fruit. Fruit about three to four times longer than wide. So that would be a silique. If I look at this thing, no, it's definitely a silicle. Uh, we can keep going ovules 16 to 60 per ovary. If I split this thing open, I only see like one or two seeds in the fruit. So it's not Draba. We're going to go with 17. 17, fruit orbicular or broadly elliptic, petals yellow or white, ovules one to two per ovary. So if we take a look again at one of these fruits. Orbicular means round. Yeah, that fits the fruit. 
flowers, um, yellowy, yeah, that fits. Ovules, one to two, just one or two seeds, um, that fits as well. And so we have alyssum here. If we flip over to alyssum, just a few pages over, uh, the first page, or page 224 there, the first question is whether it's a perennial. Um, to test that, you just, you know, pull on the plant. This one came up pretty darn easily. I don't see any growth from last year. So it's not a um, perennial. We're going to go with annual. Fruits glabrous or fruits stellate hairy? Well, if I take a look at this thing, I don't know if you can see it, but I see, you know, these kind of silvery hairs all along the stem. But then the fruit itself is totally smooth. It's kind of odd. You go from really hairy to no hairs all of a sudden. So we are going to say, yeah, the fruits are glabrous. Alyssum uh, desertorum. Alyssum desertorum here. Uh, this one is introduced. That's why I didn't feel bad pulling it up does occur in Mesa County. Flowering time is right. This one also has a picture on plate 20. Let's see if we can... <coughs> Excuse me. My allergies kicking in. Plate 20 here. Here is Alyssum desertorum. That's what the fruit looks like. Yeah, it looks, looks pretty darn similar to ours, doesn't it? All right. So that's uh, Brassicaceae for you guys. Uh, here we go.